Hi, my name's Julie Faithan Balzer, and I've been designing stencils for the Crafters Workshop since 2011. So I put together a series of videos sharing some of my very favorite stencil techniques. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope you'll check out my stencils. You can always find more tips and tricks here on my YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe. And also on my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. And you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter as well. It's free. It hits your inbox every Friday with a dose of inspiration and a lot of information about the online classes that I teach. In this video, I'm going to be using Distress Oxide sprays along with regular Distress Spray stains. Now, these are two different kinds of spray ink. One of the differences about the Oxide sprays is you'll notice that there is a little bit of what looks like sort of an opaque stuff at the bottom and you need to shake them. You'll hear they have a ball inside them. Okay, uh, I think technically you're supposed to shake them gently like this, but I just kind of go for it because that's the way that I am. One of the tips that Tim Holtz, who's the designer of these sprays, says is that you should store them on their side so that you don't have to do as much constant mixing. But let me show you the difference between the two of these. And I'm going to be using, this is the... Um, stencil that I designed called Rows of Lines for the Crafters Workshop. It comes in 6x6 and 12x12. I'm going to work on uh, some book pages and I'm just going to go ahead and on this side I'm going to spray the oxide and on this side I'm going to do the stain and I'll move the stencil. Oh, why do I move the stencil? I'll just put the stencil in the middle and I'll do a little bit of spraying. So first let's go with the oxide. So when I spray, I like to spray from like four to six inches away and I move my hand as I spray. So, oops, there you go. I sort of draw my hand as I spray. And I think it's fun to mix lots of colors. And one of the nice things about the oxides is they're fairly opaque, as you can kind of see here. Now, the distressed stains are going to be more intense color, but again, I'm going to move my hand as I spray and mix some colors as I go. But moving your hand makes a really big difference. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast to each side because I did warm colors pretty much both. Now I'm gonna add some cool, moving my hand, and let me add a cool on this side. Cool, cool. Okay, let's remove the stencil and take a peek. And that was a lot of spraying that I did. And look how nice the stenciling is. And part of that is there's not a lot of roll under because I kept the stencil six to eight inches away and I kept moving my hand. There is also plenty of ink on the stencil to be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another book page and just press it down to the stencil. If you're using thinner paper, it's possible that the ink will come through onto your hands or even not thinner paper. You can see it's coming through the holes in the spine. This was a stitched book that I unstitched. I liberated the pages to become art projects. So here is the print off of the stencil. So I should probably turn it this way. So this is the oxide side. This is the distressed stain side. And I think what you can see is the colors are slightly brighter and more intense on the side where the distress stain is and slightly more opaque in the areas where the oxide is. But I think you can see it a little more pronounced. Here you go. When you look at it here on the one where we sprayed directly, right? These colors seem a little sort of softer. These seem a little more intense. Now you can keep them totally separate. I, of course, like to mix them all together because <laughs> that's the way I roll. And same as I like to mix the stencils together, the little one and the big one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And then let's do a little bit of Distress Oxide, a little bit of Distress Stain. Again, I'm moving my hand through here. I'm going to pick up the stencil, put it aside. I'm going to take the little stencil. And again, move my hand across as I spray through here. And then of course, I can take this stencil and flip it over and push down. You can even use, you know, a book page or something else as kind of a way of keeping your hands clean. And then this will actually become a beautiful piece of paper covered with lots of spray ink. So there's a print off the stencil. I can, this is still wet on here, so I can take this 
maybe turn it a different direction. And again, use the book page to shield my hand a little bit. So you can see that by turning the stencil right, I'm getting the lines going kind of in both directions, which is really cool. So let's add a little bit of color contrast into here. Maybe we'll use the little stencil for this one. I think I'm gonna go with some red. And then let's go with this pretty pink. I love this color. This is Kitsch Flamingo, and it certainly lives up to its name. And I'm gonna flip it. So take a peek. That It's still wet, so it's not as matte as it's gonna dry, but that pale pink can be seen over this dark blue because that's one of the tricks of the oxide sprays is that they are slightly opaque. So that really helps when you're trying to layer and get lots of stuff going. Now, now here's a fun idea for how to use your stencil with these sprays. So I'm just gonna coat this piece of paper with a bunch of different sprays. I'm going to use some oxides. I love how the oxide kind of obscures the text a little bit. And yes, I use all the colors. Okay, once I've really saturated this paper, I'm going to go ahead and put my stencil on top of it. Now this is still wet. If you want it to be dry, that's fine too, but you can work into wet if you want. So I'm gonna take some light and fluffy modeling paste from the crafters workshop. And I'm gonna grab my palette knife and then I'm just going to bring it right through the stencil. Now with a stencil with this design, it's better to go sort of along the lines as opposed to in the opposite direction of the lines because you'll tend to pull under the stencil. Now the stencil is wet or well, not the stencil, but the paper underneath is wet and that's totally fine. And I'm not trying to cover the whole stencil. I think people feel sometimes that a stencil has to be used in its entirety. I think it's lovely when the stencil is only used partially. It leads a really pretty look. So I'm just scraping off any excess molding paste and redistributing it to different areas. Once I'm satisfied, I'm gonna take a minute to clean off my palette knife. You can clean the stencil if you want, but you certainly don't have to. As long as there's nothing dimensional drawing on your stencil, you're okay. And you can clean it with a baby wipe or you can put it in the sink with some soap and water. But here you go. And when this dries, it'll be even cooler. What this is, is it's picking up some of the color in the Distress Sprays, right? So it's not just plain white. It still has some of the color that you see there, but it adds dimension and you can see that form. And also by only partially stenciling, I think it leaves a really nice distressed look where it doesn't just look like you've put this stencil, you know what I mean, on top of your work. And this will be a beautiful collage paper. I should mention you can also do this process in reverse. So here is my stencil. And because the stencil is dirty, it's gonna color this white modeling paste lightly. If you wanted it to remain white for some reason, you would just be careful about cleaning your stencil. I think life is too short to clean your stencils. That's my personal feeling. I'm just spreading it out on here the same way. And again, scraping the excess, which also helps to color the modeling paste because you're essentially also scraping anything that's dirty off of the stencil and mixing it into the modeling paste. Molding paste, texture paste, modeling paste, they have some small differences, but for the most part, they're the same thing. And again, I'll clean off my palette knife. You can clean your stencil if you wish. So here I have my stenciling on my book page, and now I'm gonna go in with my Distress Sprays. Here is some Distress Stain. I feel like yellow is an underused color that does a lot. I love how sprays kind of spit sometimes. I know some people don't like it, but I think it's part of the beauty of spraying is when they do a little bit of spitting, because you really get the spray effect. So I'm obviously a more is more person and I will always add more. If you don't like more, you know, you don't have to. And I keep layering back and forth between the distressed stain 
and the Distress Oxide. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and we will look at all of these pieces of paper once they have dried. My papers are dry. This is the first one that we did where I believe this is the Oxide side and this is the Distress Stain side. This is where we press the stencil to it. And again, this is the Oxide side and this is the Distress Stain side. And I can tell that because the colors are brighter with the Distress Stain. Here's the one where we layered them kind of all together. You can see the grid pattern of this stencil using it in both six by six and 12 by 12. And now the modeling paste samples. So here's the one where we added the modeling paste after we had already sprayed. And for comparison, here's the one where we added the modeling paste before. They look very similar. So oftentimes, it's not that you're looking for a particular result, it's which process works better for you. Because I think the results are almost identical. Perhaps the modeling paste stands out a little bit more in this one than it does in this one, but pretty similar, I think.